Well, it's always an honor to speak. Um, as, as my dad said, Courtney spoke last week. I wasn't here to see it or hear it. I was checking out a Mariner Satellite Campus. No, I'm kidding. I wasn't. I was uh, at a conference in Atlanta, uh, but I did get a chance to hear it. Courtney, I want to just correct a few things that she had. No. A few points that I feel like were a little off. And people are asking me to correct, so I'm going to do that. No, but Courtney, was, she was alone with our three crazy kids. She somehow managed to wrangle them and also prepare and speak from her heart. So can we give her a round of applause? <laughs> Recently, Courtney and I went to our first wedding in like two years before COVID. We were really excited, got all dressed up. High schoolers, you guys have heard a lot of these stories, so just laugh with, with us, okay? Um, but so we, it's a 12.30 wedding. We're excited. It's up in Anaheim. So we drive up there, drop the kids off at my mom and dad's. And it's at this Catholic facility. And so we get there, and there's like gates all around. We can't find the entrance. And then we see a church in the corner parking lot. There's a big facility. And we're like, oh, that's got to be it. So we walk in. We walk in the side door. And it's this really long church. It looks, I think it was 100 yards long. And we were like on the 99th yard line. Like we, it was so far away. And we're like, I don't, it was a coworker's wedding, so I didn't know family or friends. I was like, I think this is the right wedding. And I'm like, the, the people up front, they, 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 they looked familiar enough, like their shapes and complexion. I was like, I think this is it. And uh, we're there for a good 10, 15 minutes. They're doing a, a mass in Latin, and so we can't hear anything. Then they do the vows, and it's like, dear Elizabeth. And I was like, we are not here for Elizabeth's wedding. <laughs> We were at the wrong wedding. So we like, are like, oh, time to go. So we, we sneak out. I felt like I was in like a 90s rom-com. It was, I was like, where are we going? So anyways, we couldn't find the service. We went to the reception. We ended up having a great time. The point of sharing that story is I, ha I have an idea of where I, I want to go today, but my history would say I might not land there. <sighs> um, last time I spoke back in June, uh, I shared on asking, talking to the Lord. Um, some of you might remember the story of Connor asking for ice cream at 7.30 in the morning. No? You guys don't remember that? Um, I'll do a quick recap. I had four key points on the subject of asking. When we ask, it places dependency on the one you're asking. When we ask, it removes, or second point, when we ask, it removes presumptuous behavior. So if we're really asking a question or making a request dependent on God, it should remove any idea that we are entitled to get something that we deserve or don't deserve. Third point was when we ask, we release control. We stop being self-reliant. We're releasing control and living in faith that God's will will be done. The fourth point was if we ask, we have to listen. Yes or no, the response we want or not, we have to hear first, then we can speak to whatever, whatever it is we're asking about. Does that make sense? So today I want to focus on that last point, explore the flip side of asking or speaking. I want to talk about hearing or listening, more specifically hearing God's voice. So if I was going to title this message today, I would title it, What is God Saying? So I have a question for you guys. I was kind of reluctant to do this because I don't love it when speakers do this, but I'm going to do it for you guys. <laughs> um, those same groups you were just in praying together, I want you to kind of huddle back up in those for three minutes. Here's the question I want you to discuss. What makes somebody a good listener? What are the qualities of a person that makes them a good listener? You understand the question? All right, go ahead and turn. Yeah, you're not listening. Take three minutes. <laughs> okay, five, four, three, two, one. All right, all ears back on me. Thank you for, for doing that. Without asking you guys what those qualities are, I'm guessing some of them were interested. Right? Like if you're a good listener, they're interested in what you're saying. Intentional, attentive, invested, 
They remember what you talked about. It was active listening, focused on the conversation, eye contact. You ever been talking to somebody and you can tell they're like not interested at all because they're kind of like looking around for a better conversation? Yeah. I've been that guy and you've been that guy as well. Um, empathetic. You're telling somebody a story, a good listener is going to feel those feels with you. Ask questions about what you're talking about. All these are good qualities of good listening. So hearing God's voice has been on my heart for a few weeks now, and it seems like an important topic, especially in today's climate. There's a lot of confusion in the world today, a lot of stimuli competing to grab our attention. There is a physical connection between hearing and speaking and or hearing and doing. Physically, in our natural bodies, God's created us to listen before we speak. So think newborn baby to toddler, toddler to eight-year-old, eight-year-old, and on and on we go. The more we listen, the more words we have, the more things we're able to communicate. So a few minutes ago, we, we turned in groups and talked about what qualities make a good listener. So the question is, are you a good listener? Do you think you're a good listener? The Harvard Business Review has an article titled, What Great Listeners Actually Do. I like to throw in Harvard Business Review when I'm speaking, because <laughs> it makes me sound legit or smart or something. Um, <clears throat> the title, it's called, What Great Listeners Do, Actually Do. And here's what it says. It says, chances are you think you're a good listener. People's appraisal of their listening abilities is much like their assessment of their driving skills, in that the great bulk of adults think they're above average. In our experience, most people think good listening comes down to three things, not talking when others are talking, Letting others know you're listening through facial expressions and verbal sounds. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's funny. I say that a lot. Oh, how funny when it's not funny. I'm just um, being, being able to repeat what others have said practically word for word. It goes on to list like six levels of learners. It's definitely too much for you guys. It's way over your heads. It's Harvard stuff. So, um, however, I did like how the art article ends. It says, finally, we hope all will see that the highest and best form of listening comes in playing the same role for the other person that a trampoline plays for a child. It gives energy, acceleration, height, and amplification. These are hallmarks of great listening. I believe that trampoline effect is what prayer does in our life. Prayer, in fact, does give energy and amplification to our life. It turns the spiritual router on in our life. And I, I shared this with the high schoolers. Like, I don't really understand how the internet works. Some of you for sure do, better than I do. I was using words that Madison's like, that's not a real word that you're saying. <laughs> Forget what it was, but they were all confused. So I don't know how it fully works, but I do know that my router needs to be turned on and functioning for their connection to work. Does that track? If the router's not turned on, my internet doesn't work. So um, I believe if we want to hear from God, we have to turn that router on in our hearts and minds. If the power is on, but the connection is poor, there's usually something blocking that connection. Physic, like internet, that could be weather, that could be whatever. Spiritually, those could be a lot of things. That could be unforgiveness, pride, a hidden sin. If you're not hearing from God, because he is speaking, ask yourself, is there anything in your life that may be blocking this connection? Identify it. Deal with it. God wants more of you. And if there is something blocking that connection, deal with it. One of the key qualities of a good listener that the Bible talks about is knowing his voice. 
John 10, 24 through 27 talks about how the sheep know my voice. I'll, I'll read the passage, starting in verse 24. The Jews who were gathered around him saying, how, much, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you're the Messiah, just tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify about me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them. They follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. The other day, my two oldest, Reese and Connor, were watching a movie, and uh, I walked in to ask them to finish a chore, something like, I don't know, mow the lawn or wash my car, something like that. <laughs> but I, I'm like, I asked them to pause the movie to, to go finish a chore, and they were so locked into the movie. And parents, you can probably relate to this. They were so locked in, or husbands and wives can relate to this too, but so locked in that they, they didn't hear my voice. It was actually impressive. They were so focused on the movie that I, as I was speaking to them, they weren't registering or responding to me. And having this topic on, on hand, I, I handled it like very A-game. So I, I didn't, I just kind of did like the teacher thing. I can wait. Um, I just got closer. I was like, I can wait. <laughs> I can wait. Um, So I felt like the Lord spoke to me in that moment. I felt like he said, this is you. This is you, and your day-to-day -day is captured. Your attention is captured. It's so easy for us to get focused on work, our kids' sports, the news, COVID stuff, social media, or whatever else is distracting us, whatever's grabbing our attention. We get so distracted and busy that I think we miss what God's saying to us sometimes. We miss hearing his voice. Can you guys relate to that? So just like uh, me speaking to Reese and Connor, do you guys believe that God is speaking to you? Or is that simply reserved for church leaders and pastors, Kanye West, whoever else? Here's the thing. He is... A gentleman. God is a gentleman. He always meets us halfway. He doesn't scream at us to listen. Just like I didn't scream at my kids to go finish washing my car. <laughs> He's a gentleman. He's not going to scream at us. Yelling can be an effective tool to get a job done or gain attention, but it doesn't teach us to listen. You might know some parents that are constantly screaming at their kids, but they're they're not dealing with the behavior. They're not getting on the, on the kid's level and getting after their heart. That's what God wants us to do. He wants to speak to us. You can remember the story of Elijah. He's on the side of the cliff. How did God speak to him? It wasn't in the fire, the earthquake, the wind, or the rain. It was in a still, small voice. Recently, I was reflecting back at times that I believe God clearly spoke to me, and I was reminded of one. Back in 2010, I got a call from my dad letting me know that Cade, my nephew, was found to have a tumor in his brain. I remember just being caught off guard and driving down to the hospital and like not even putting the car in park and screaming out to the Lord, why? This five-year-old boy going to have to deal with this. And I felt like I heard the Lord speak to me very clearly. And I've shared this with Cade before, but I felt like he said, I'm, as I'm shouting why, he said, because I love him. And he's in the palm of my hand. And that didn't fix anything. But I believe it's true, Cade. He, had, he, had, he does love you, and you are in the palm of his hand. You're making a difference. I remember going up to, 
to speak or parking and going up talking to Aaron and Mike and I said told Aaron I said felt like God spoke to me but I don't think this solves your problem or the issue at hand but I want you to know God loves Cade and he's in the palm of his hand he's got him Can you think back to a time when God spoke to you? If you can, what was happening in your life at that time? Was it proximity? Desperation? Joy? What was it? What was happening in your life at that time? I know when I was praying for you, Kate, I felt very close to God. When we seek God out, it shows him we want to know him. In these moments, we want to hear from him desperately. Author uh, A.W. Tozer, some of you might know, in The Pursuit of God, he talks about how God is waiting to be wanted. And I've always loved that phrase, God is waiting to be wanted. However, there's times of getting after it in the Lord that always, can't always be in these times of desperation. If, if that was how Courtney and I related to each other, where it's like, just these highs and lows, that wouldn't be an effective relationship for us. Um, on, on flight back from Atlanta this last weekend, um, and I was, I was I, I guess the older I'm getting, the least, less I like to fly. I don't know if it's because I have kids at home or what, but um, coming back, and we're like at cruising altitude, and then they say, oh, we thought it was going to be a nice flight, but it looks like we're going to have some bumps up ahead. And I'm like, Okay, seatbelt on. I was like, pulled it so tight. I was like, like holding it, losing circulation in my legs. And we're hit, we hit some bumps. Nothing crazy, but, it's, but they kept saying, please sit down, buckle up. And I was like, I am. But I, I was feeling like, oh, shoot, we haven't hit like the, the real big bumps yet. And I was like, I was, I was watching the GPS monitor, and it was like the plane, you know, it was like, and it ticked away. It was like, oh, shoot, we have to go around. Something's big out there. <laughs> and what was funny is there was a lady and her daughter next to me, and they were literally like doing a crossword puzzle. They are like, what is, what's a three-letter word for fun? I was like, <laughs> every bomb was like. <laughs> and I started praying in the, when I was in the turbulence. You know, I'm like, gosh, Lord, get us through this. Oh, I don't like this feeling. Pray this, like, turbulence would stop. The weather would go away. We'd have a smooth flight. And again, and probably because I knew I was going to be sharing on this, I, I felt like I heard the Lord speak to me. Felt like I heard him say, don't just speak to me. Don't just pray in the turbulence. Like, pray before, pray after, pray during, constantly. Give thanks afterwards. When that, like, seatbelt sign turned off, I was like, oh, thank you, Lord. You guys hear me on that? It's very possible that God is speaking to you and you're not sure how to recognize his voice. It's interesting to me how some voices are so recognizable. My mom and my Aunt Debbie, they sound very similar. My two sisters, Paige and Aaron, you get them on the phone, they, they sound very similar. People recognize Courtney for her voice all the time. I don't know why that is. I think it's time, I think. I think it's time together, familiarity with the voice. You could, you might go, you might, Courtney will be on speakerphone sometimes when I come home and I'm like, who is she talking to? It's usually Hope on FaceTime or something. But I recognize Hope's voice because I've heard it so much. There's other voices though I walk in, I'm like, who is she talking to? Whose voice is that? So how do we know if it's God's voice speaking to us? There's a few, this is, or this is not new, but I think it's worth mentioning. There are three voices we might hear when we're listening out for what God is saying. You have yourself, Satan, or God. So yourself, Satan, or God. And how do we dif differentiate those three? So yourself is your own thoughts. Your own thoughts are probably going to sound logical, analytical, It'll sound like the kind of things you often think about. So, for example, 
what am I gonna have for lunch today? That's a you thought. Satan, Satan is all, always condemns. His purpose is to steal, to kill, and destroy. So if your thoughts that you're having are negative, destructive, vicious, or accusing, it's the enemy. If you're hearing, you'll never thrive in California. It's too expensive. Politics. I just wrote politics. You don't have any real friends here. No one appreciates you. If you're hearing those type of thoughts, that's Satan. Last voice is God's. So when God speaks, it always lines up with the Bible, his character and his actions. He is kind, he is loving, he's inspirational, he's wise and healing, and he's convicting without being condemning. Convicting without being condemning. In my experience, God has never spoke to me audibly. It's always been a thought, a thought that didn't feel like my own, a thought that lines up with God's character and actions. He speaks in many ways, though. He speaks through community, through people, through Christians and non-Christians. I remember when we were looking to buy our house and I was, we were meeting with our CPA and I was just kind of nervous and I felt like this guy, non-Christian, spoke to me. Spoke, the Lord spoke through him. He said, I think it's good to wake up scared sometimes. Keeps you working hard. I was like, all right. It just affirmed like the risk we were taking. It was a good thing. Uh, he speaks through the Bible, through creation, through music. He's telling the high schoolers that God spoke to me through a Jay-Z song one time. True story. But we have to get, we, I have to get better at recognizing his voice. Uh, at the conference we were at last weekend, the topic was Into the Mystery. We explored all the beautiful mysteries God has for us and how to enjoy those. There are some powerful takeaways. One thing that Charles Simpson said that really impacted me, he said, the Holy Spirit is like a GPS. It's meant to be used when you're going somewhere new or to guide you when you're not sure where you're going. If your routine is safe, you don't need it. Certainly feels like we're heading in a new direction and to an unknown, confusing. It's important that we have the right guide to help us along the way, to tap into our spiritual GPS. So I want to end with this. California. California is a great state. It is beautiful. From the Pacific Ocean, I felt like I was, I was writing this down as like a song. From the Pacific Ocean <laughs> to San Diego. <laughs> no, but from, honestly, from the Pacific Ocean up the Central Coast to the, the High Sierras, I mean, you got, it doesn't get prettier than Yosemite Range. Like, it's unbelievable, this state we live in. I don't think any, honestly, I don't think any other state can touch our beauty ours has to offer. I'm a little biased. There's beautiful places in the world, but as a state, it has so much to offer. And California's full of God's people. However, I find myself sometimes listening to those other two, those other two voices, specifically when thinking about where we live, practically, logically, negative. There are issues in our state that the enemy wants to use to further divide relationships. And in the world, not just our state. There are most likely things going on here that you don't agree with. Practically, your thoughts might tell you just, just leave. Problem solved. And there's no judgment, honestly, for friends and family that have left in fact, if, if God's calling you to go, you need to go. But what is the Lord saying? How do you navigate all that is in front of you? I believe where you are matters. 
Your geography matters to the Lord. And it's important that you hear his voice to never be reactionary. To realize you can make a difference where you live. You can share God's love. He can speak through you to your neighbor to be kind, loving, inspirational, wise, healing. You can be convicting without being condemning. I believe God's stirring up some new things in me for sure and in our hearts, and I'm here for it. God is speaking to you. What is he saying? I want to hear about it. I need you. I need you. You need me. Sorry. Let's start listening together better, or start listening better. Let's work to hear his voice in our day-to-day and not just in the turbulence. Amen. Declare.